Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cogules Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nixon Cogules. I'm the founder and the director of the Cogules Energy Spy Network and the Cogules Nation. So, I have i3 Window Manager set up on my host machine running Linux Mint 21.3 Virginia. For this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I was able to get i3 set up my personal way. So I will go to the Cinnamon desktop and I'll be right back with you in just a second. Now, since we have a Linux Mint tutorial, or really just anything Ubuntu and Debian based, you'll want to follow along with me. If you're installing i3 on OpenSUSE, Fedora, Arch, Kashi, just follow along however you can, or watch some other tutorials on how to do it. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and bring up a terminal. We're gonna do Control Alt and T. Don't mind this Haskell thing. That's from the DT color scripts uh, thing, which we will be installing on this. Anyway, first things first, you'll want to head to a web browser afterwards. Keep the terminal up and I have to open this thing up here, which actually is good because I'll be able to go to here i3wm.org forward slash docs forward slash repositories dot html. I am using the development release of i3, so you may want to do the same thing as well. Let's, oops, I'm going to go ahead and clear that actually, since I want the thing to be a little smaller. So for this development repository, we'll go ahead and curl this if I can actually do it right. Control C, Control Shift and V, hit enter. This will add the keys in order to even get i3. Then you need to add apt transport https, hit enter on that. You might be able to have this on your machine. If not, hit enter and let apt do its thing. And then echo this command. Go ahead and place this into your terminal. And then you'll basically echo this. And then you'll add the auto build for i3. And then, of course, as always, we'll end up doing sudo apt update. I'm going to go ahead and update my machine as well. After the update is done, go ahead and do the following. sudo apt install i3-wm. You won't be getting the i3 meta package. Here's why. You'll want to do i3 lock, i3 blocks, just in case you want to configure i3 even further than the way I'm doing it now, or just beyond the basics of i3, which is extremely limiting suckless tools this will allow you to basically do some demon you shenanigans you'll do nitrogen or if you want you can also use fe but i'm not going to be using fe i'll be using nitrogen instead and then right afterwards you'll also want to grab this may be a little strange you'll want to grab the font awesome fonts and the Powerline fonts. Though I already have the Powerline fonts installed on my machine, so for now, I'll just do Font Awesome. Despite the fact I may already have Font Awesome, it's in my .fonts folder. This is the local fonts folder, I think. No, it's not, okay. So I need to get, uh, thankfully I have them, so I'll need to do Font Awesome. But if you want to do on the machine without going through some hoops, probably just do fonts font awesome and then fonts powerline and there are a couple of different things you'll be able to grab one of them is actually up here which is bumblebee status we will not get into that right now though because we're still installing i3 for now we're gonna go ahead and get everything now i already have the stuff installed once you have the stuff installed for i3 log out of your current session and log in to i3 for the first time. 
Now that i3 is installed and you are inside of the window manager, you will be asked two questions. The first one is if you want to generate a configuration file from default. Go ahead and accept the default generation file. Then for your mod key, hit enter again if you want to use the Windows key or the super key. If not, hit down arrow on your keyboard and hit enter to use the alt key. Now, this is i3. What are we supposed to do here? First things first, we're going to go ahead and hit mod and enter. Now, we need to use a text editor of some sort. I will be using NeoVim, but you can use Nano, Micro, whatever you like. So we're going to do your text editor of choice, home directory with a tilde key, dot config, i3, and then config. This will bring us to the i3 window manager configuration file. And we'll be able to do a couple of things here. Once we are in i3, we will already have a font issue. We are using monospace 8. Now, if you want to use monospace, cool, that's fine. But for the time being, I'm actually going to go ahead and use JetBrains mono nerd font. And that's way too small of a size. So we're going to do size 16. That's my personal prerogative. So we're going to do a quick W in NeoVim mod shift and r to reset i3 now the text is bigger and the font is different now we're going to go ahead keep moving forward until we get to this thing right here now we already have the i3 sensible terminal now because we have the i3 sensible terminal we do not want that right now instead i will be doing gnome terminal if I can spell now I'm going to I'm going to save that it's already been written mod shift and R to reset it and then it'll bring up the GNOME terminal now you'll be using the i3 sensible terminal but it's going to be extremely ugly so you may not want to do something about that so next to kill the focus window just take out the shift take this out booyah then you'll be able to do mod and Q. Oh, well, after we reset the window manager and then do mod and Q. Done, dusted. Here we have D menu, but if you want to install Rofi, you can go ahead and do that too. I believe Rofi is in the repositories. Oh my goodness. But yes, Rofi is indeed uh, in the repositories. So we're good there. These are the Ubuntu repositories, because again, I'm on Mint. You got a whole butt ton of commands here. You'll be able to use those just fine. Now we're gonna get to this workspaces thing. I do not really care when it comes to workspaces right now. I do have a configuration file that I'll be using after I record this video to already get that done. But I will place this specific configuration file on Codeberg so you'll be able to take a look at, at that and see what I did there. Again, you'll be able to use mod and a number on your uh, top row of keys in order to head to different windows. Now, I have Workspace 10 as OBS right now, so let's just move on. Now, if you want to do the same thing, say you open up a terminal window, but you want to place that terminal in Workspace 6. Mod, Shift, and 6 will do that. Go to Mod and 6. There you go. Mod shift and one will bring it back to workspace one. So I will go ahead and do mod and Q. Moving on, you have mod shift and C to reload your configuration file. Mod shift and R is used to reset I3. Now, this nag bar here. Now, you're going to want to get rid of this part. You'll do mod shift and Q in order to do this. Now, if we do mod shift and Q, there we go. Yeah, I just didn't reset it. That's fine. So we got that there too. Next, you'll probably want to do something about this resize thing. 
but look it up at your own time because I'm not going to be covering that today. Down here is going to be the bar section. Now this is going to be a little strange. I do have some text found in a previous config I have made in order that I be able to use something along these lines. But we won't be using i3 status. I'll go ahead and do mod and 2 to go to my other workspace, mod and D to run D menu, and then I'll bring up LibreWolf, my browser of choice. I will go ahead and do bumblebee status. And that will be on bumblebee-status.readthedocs.il. We'll be headed to the introduction. So we should be good on that front there. Now I'm going to do control and click on list of available themes. Yes, you can theme this as well, but we will be doing that in just a second. First things first, shift, not shift, mod and enter. And then we are going to git clone this thing. Now, the only thing that we shouldn't do is this. We'll do HTTPS and then all of that. So it's gonna be slightly modified, but hit enter, it'll clone for you just fine. Now, once cloned, change into that directory, doing cd bumblebee-status. Once that's done, do a quick ls. This is where bumblebee status happens to be located. So, we will want to do that real quick. We'll go back to our configuration file, and where it says i3 status, remove that. Instead, go ahead and do your tilde key, and then forward slash bumblebee status with a dash and then type in the same thing again. So once that's done, go ahead and put in a backslash. Backslashes are in fact a requirement for using bumblebee status. Now, using module, you need to type in dash m for module. In my case, I do CPU, time, date, pulse audio sync, which is your output volume, and pulse audio source, which is basically your input. Now, we're gonna do another one of these. Now, there are also themes. Now, the available themes are here. If you want something nice and dark, you could do something like grayish power line or iceberg, but iceberg does act a little weird sometimes. I will go ahead and do one that I like. One that I like using a lot is this groove box thing. So I will go ahead and do dash T groove box. Make sure you spell that correctly. Now you may also want to move your bar from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. To do that, you write position top. That's it. Now we're going to go ahead and save it. Mod, shift, and R. Now you should be able to see your stuff right over here. This looks a little strange, but I will get that fixed here shortly. In fact, it's easy to fix for me because all I got to do is that. And then there you go. Done and dusted. Now, once this part is done, we can go ahead and do a couple of things. In terms of colorization nonsense, well, I got to do something about that. But let's add some more things and do something towards the bottom. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do exec underscore always. And then I'm going to get out of insert mode in Vim, mod, and enter. I'll do a quick X render. Now I have DP0. So in that case, I'll go over here and then go into insert mode. And then we'll do X render dash dash output. And then whatever your monitor happens to be ID'd as. Next is dash dash mode. And in my case, I'm at 2560 by 1440. So I have to do that. 2560 by 1440. Next is dash dash rate, which will be your refresh rate. In my case, 165. So that shouldn't be so bad now. 
Now I will go ahead and get out of the terminal. Not that. I'll go over here, get out of that. We'll do a quick save, and then that, that, and that. Now it is going to bring me a little bit of weirdness, but I will be at 165 hertz now. So I'm cool over that. Next, I'm going to add another line. Go ahead and go into nitrogen. I'll just go into workspace three. And then we'll go into D menu by doing mod and D nitrogen. So go ahead and go into nitrogen. I will be using this picture of, sure, Kiyomizu Deta. So we'll go ahead and do Kiyomizu Deta. And there you go. We have a picture. But every time you restart I3, you want to keep this picture, right? Or whatever picture you choose. For that, go ahead and do exec underscore always dash dash no dash start up dash ID. I will actually do the same thing here. This will basically load things in faster and not have this uh, loading thing. You may want to do that on pretty much everything that requires this command. Then we'll do nitrogen dash dash restore. This will restore it to the picture you have chosen as your background. Now, once that's done, go ahead and save it. And we're going to go to workspace number three, mod shift and R will reset it. And there you go. You have your wallpaper saved. So that's done and dusted. Now I'll tell you what, we will have this specific configuration file posted onto my codeberg so you can take a look for yourself and get started from there. I will be bringing in my personal configuration in just a second. All right, so here is my personal i3 configuration file. Now, to access this, again, I will do super enter and then invim to my i3 config. Now I have a butt ton more things in my personal configuration, but you'll see what I have done. First things first, I have the font set to JetBrains Mono Nerd font. Now I think for the bar, I have the bar set to nothing. Okay, that's fine. Now we'll go all the way down to this XRander thing. I could have placed it at the bottom, but I decided not to. I also have mod control and E for PC Man FM. I have mod Q to kill a focused window. So say I accidentally open a window, I can just mod and Q that. You have seen this in the tutorial earlier. We have whatever this is, which is basically starting up a terminal. Now I forgot to do dash dash no startup dash ID, but I might actually have already had that in there. I don't know. I'll make some changes to it to fit your needs. I have some browsers I can launch using mod shift and whatever key I have on the keyboard that's available. Mod shift and O will start up OBS on my end. Mod and D will start up D menu. I've left most of this default. I have used words to dictate what workspaces I personally use. For, for example, if I go to workspace three, this will be my gaming workspace. And then we have some workspace number stuff. Go through that. I have mod shift and Q to initiate the I3 nag bar. Mod shift and R to reset it. Mod shift and C to reload it. And then I can go ahead, go down to my status, right? I have iceberg dark power line that I currently have set, but I think I will go ahead and switch to groove box for the time being. And then here are some colors I currently have. Now these colors are going to be, the ones on the bottom are for these types of windows. The ones on the top are going to be for the workspace stuff, the background, all that. Now, I have a couple of other things in which I have installed. The other one is something called auto tiling. I will bring up LibreWolf and search it up. Auto tiling basically allows you to do some more shenanigans with i3, especially if you want to make it master and stack. 
Now to do this, go ahead and clone the repository after of course doing sudo apt install python3 dash i3 ipc. Since I already have that on my machine, there it is. I can go ahead and first things first, grab the source code to it. Get clone, control shift and V. But I already have auto tiling. So once you get auto tiling, go ahead and change to that directory. And then ls to that. Do the same thing with changing the directory. ls again. This main.py needs to be brought to user local bin. To do this, you need to do sudo cp, because you're copying main.py, and then you'll be doing user local bin, if I can spell it right, and then auto tiling. Hit enter, and you'll copy this main.py file over to user local bin and rename it to auto tiling. Now, once that is done, go ahead and get into your configuration file and do an exec always command with a no startup ID flag. Do auto tiling. I set it to dash dash limit two. Well, here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I will go to the beginning and comment this line out and I will reset i3. Now I'm going to open a terminal. Okay, not so bad. I will open another one. This is starting to get a little messed up over here. Now what happens if I open another one? Do you see the idea? If you don't see it, this is basically you running out of space. So in order that this doesn't happen, you'll want to add in this line, exec underscore always with a no startup ID flag, auto tiling, and set the limit to two. That's what this dash dash limit flag is. I will go ahead and save that. And now you should be able to do a proper master and stack format. You should be good on that front. But you may be wondering how I got these color scripts. Well, there is a color script shell command by DistroTube, and it's actually on his GitLab. Let me head to that real quick and show you what that's like. This is basically some ASCII art designed for having multiple shells, but you'll be able to identify which these shells are. You'll see what I mean. If you're on Ubuntu, you're going to have to go ahead and do these three commands here. These three commands will be able to do some wonderful things. But after this is done, go ahead and go into your dot bash RC and then add in color script random. Once you do that, get out of whatever terminal you're using, re-enable the terminal, and you'll be able to have these little color scripts here. Not so bad, huh? Well, that's going to be it for this episode. And I am out of time for today's video on the i3 window manager. Thank you and good night.